Welcome everybody. My name is Teresa Buick. I work at Heritage Christian Services as the Associate Director of our Workforce and Talent Development Team. And I'm Erica Bellis Acer, and I also work at Heritage Christian Services, but I'm the Associate Director uh, for the Center for Human Services Education. Today we'll be guiding you through understanding Goal Area 1, Competency B, Getting to Know the Person Through Assessment and Discovery. Today's competency is Competency B, which is getting to know the person through assessment and discovery. Competency B falls under Goal Area 1, which is putting people first. Putting people first is the foundation of all 23 core competencies and the basis for all the work we do to support others. In the next 15 minutes, you'll hear a scenario and view some visuals that will help you not only remember the skills associated with the competency, but you'll also see some examples of how and when to utilize your skills to best demonstrate your competency. Okay, there are five main skills associated with competency B. These skills are the DSP, evaluates the ways in which past and current events and environmental factors affect the way the person acts and reacts to others. Using a holistic approach, participates in the individual's life planning activities and assists in their implementation. The DSP encourages and supports problem solving and coping skills in a variety of settings to gain information about the individual and his and her response to the environment. The DSP supports the self-direction of services. By getting to know each person individually through conversations and observations, the DSPs begin to discover the unique skills, preferences, support needs, and possibilities for an individual first, often uncovering abilities and desires that no one has noticed previously. As DSPs become more familiar with the individual, DSP enables the person being supported to create a positive working relationship with the DSP, built on mutual trust that further assures that the person will be supported to do whatever they dream about doing. We will go over how to utilize these skills more specifically, but first let's start off with a scenario where we will apply our general knowledge of these skills. Keep the skills listed on the slide in mind as you listen to the scenario. You're a DSP and you're supporting Mary. Mary's a young lady who shares her home with four other women. Mary enjoys going out places. She communicates in a non-traditional way using some signs, gestures, and an iPad with picture prompts. Mary came home from work today and asked you, what are we doing tonight? You're the DSP working with Mary, and you respond by saying, let's look at the calendar. It looks like the planned activity is to go out for coffee. Mary instantly gets red in the face, hits the calendar, and storms off to her room. As a DSP, how should you respond? Remember, according to Competency B, you want to respond in a way that's encouraging and supporting, reflecting what you know about Mary. How can you do this? There are a number of specific things you can do to demonstrate this competency. As we go over these, I want you to think of how you would apply each task to the scenario where Mary is visibly upset about getting coffee with the group. Originally, when you met Mary and started getting to know her, you might remember that she prefers to go places in small groups and almost always prefers spending time with her good friend Sue that lives with her. Mary loves smoothies and hates coffee. She doesn't get along with everyone that lives in her house. Who does? When she asked you to participate in her last circle of support meeting, she expressed a desire to spend more time with close friends like Sue, rather than participating in large group activities. Some of her family members were present at that meeting too, and have said that even Mary, when she was younger, preferred smaller intimate gatherings rather than loud places where there might be lots of people. Remember last week when she went out for coffee with the group and she wasn't engaged and sat with her arms crossed on the couch she didn't want to order anything that night. What is all this telling you? Thinking about past and current events and some of those environmental factors that you've observed when you've spent time with Mary will help you critically think about what's happening right now. It will also give you clues as to how best you can approach the situation to make sure that Mary's needs are met, that she participates in an activity that's meaningful to her, and that she feels that she can express her desires to you knowing that you'll understand her concerns. 
Remember that every interaction with someone is an opportunity to get to know someone better. In order to demonstrate the skills we just went over, a DSP should meet, talk, and spend time with the person in their circle of support to learn more about the person. Getting to know a person does not happen overnight. Spending time with a person will give the DSP the most insight into who they are and what they enjoy. Getting to know how a person communicates and understand that challenging behaviors are most often a form of communication. We've mentioned this before. Think about the ways you express yourself when you personally think someone doesn't understand you or you just are feeling frustrated or angry. Do you consider your reactions to be challenging behaviors? Or are they just things to get your point across? The DSP should understand that files and written information about a person can be helpful, but should also be used in conjunction with in-person conversations and observations. Sometimes information can be outdated or written by someone who really didn't get to know the person. The DSP should talk about problems and concerns with the individual as they arise to gain an understanding of their point of view. The DSP could provide emotional support to help the person better cope with their problems. Remember to treat the person the way they want to be treated. If you aren't sure what support you can give, just ask. So now let's go back to the scenario. You notice that Mary stormed off and got red in the face when she found out what the plan was. If you think about the skills in competency B, you'll recognize that sometimes the things we see as behaviors are the ways in which people communicate. Think about how you sometimes express your anger or frustration. Mary doesn't usually react to things this way, so you might surmise that she's trying to tell you that she might not want to participate or she might not like the plan. Maybe she just had a bad day. Maybe something else is bothering her but it's plainly obvious that she's trying to tell you something. Remember, our main goal here is to understand what Mary's response was to the situation and to encourage her and to support her to problem solve. By working through the situation, she can communicate how she feels about different activities and maybe express what she would prefer to do instead. Obviously, this can be a very stressful situation. It's easy to jump to conclusions about why Mary may have acted the way she did. You might even feel like Mary is angry at you. It's important to remember to use your resources to respond best in this situation. This is a perfect example of why critical thinking skills are such an important part of the DSP's toolkit. So one way you could respond after Mary walked away is this. You could directly address Mary and ask her what's bothering her. You might find that she's still angry and doesn't want to talk to you right now. You could offer Mary some time to herself and let her know that you're there to talk to her about whatever she may be feeling. You want to make sure that you assure her that you're open-minded and that you're there to talk to her about her concerns and to better understand her point of view. You could say, Mary, I can see you're upset about something and I'm having a hard time figuring out exactly what that might be. That, that might be making you even more upset. If you want to talk to me, I'm here for you anytime. I may be able to help you communicate exactly how you're feeling and help you find ways that you could express yourself in a way that might make it easier for staff to support you in the way you want them to. By responding this way, you're demonstrating that you can encourage and support problem solving and coping skills by talking about problems and concerns with Mary to gain understanding of her point of view. You've also shown that you can help Mary better cope with her problem by providing emotional support. This is an important part of getting to know a person through assessment and discovery. Establishing trust in a supportive relationship with Mary will open doors to supporting her in all aspects of her life. Another way you could respond to the same scenario is this. Mary walks away and you are thinking, wow, I've never seen Mary react like that before. What do I do now? First things first, you could find another staff that knows Mary well and talk to them about your observations. You know that Joanna is working tonight and she and Mary have a pretty unique relationship. They get along well, and Joanna was the staff that initially introduced you to Mary and probably was most helpful teaching you about ways to communicate with Mary. When you tell Joanna what happened, she says, 
sad, sad because she came home from work today in a good mood. But then she reminds you that in Mary's behavior support plan that you read, it has information about how Mary communicates her displeasure with situations around her or in her environment. It says that Mary gets upset quickly when she doesn't want to participate in an activity and sometimes reacts in different ways. Joanna lets you know the best way to consistently handle the situation according to her plan as well as past experiences is to give Mary a little time, an opportunity to talk about what is bothering her and then offer an alternative. You might also give a call to Mary's family to see if they could shed light on what might be bothering Mary. Mary's family has always been a big support to her and an integral part of her circle of support. They have said they are understanding when staff are concerned or are not sure how to handle a situation, that they would always welcome a call at any time. So you call Mary's brother Tom. He tells you that Mary FaceTimed him already. And while even he had a hard time understanding Mary, he could tell it had something to do with tonight's plan. He said she kept showing him pictures of her friend Sue and making her sign for drink. She showed him a picture of coffee and was shaking her head no. So armed with this helpful information, you can approach Mary to find out what is bothering her. You may respond in a myriad of different ways. But by using your observations, what you know from her circle of support and from her formal assessments, like a behavior support plan, and your past experiences, you can be sure to provide the most positive support to assist Mary to work through the situation. When you approach Mary, remember, there's something that she's trying to tell you through her actions. She knows what she wants to say. You don't. You're the one that has the barrier. Mary is very clear in knowing what she does and doesn't want to do. She's just expressing it differently than you or I might. When you sit down with Mary, you might start by asking her how her day was or about something else that will start the conversation on a positive note. Once you get going and you're feeling confident that Mary is comfortable talking with you, you might say, I noticed that you got upset when I mentioned going out for coffee. I wonder if there's something that you would rather do or if something else is bothering you. Wait for Mary to offer a suggestion. Mary points to a picture of Sue, and then you could say, do you want to go out with Sue tonight instead? Maybe you'd like to see if Sue would go to the concert in the park, and we can grab a smoothie on the way. By responding this way, you'll be demonstrating that you're competent in evaluating the way in which past and current events and environmental factors affect the way Mary acted and reacted to the situation. You reached out to Mary's circle of support, which gave you valuable information and helped you get to know her better, which in turn helps you to support her better. In this scenario, you've also demonstrated that you understand that Mary was using her actions to try to communicate her preferences to you. Behavior is a form of communication. And by being able to respond to it appropriately shows that you're a competent and confident BFP. By reflecting back on Mary's behavior support plan and other documents that you've read about her, you can better and more consistently support Mary. But remember, Mary's a person and not a piece of paper. The best way to get to know her is not by reading about her, it's about spending time with her. Lastly, you've demonstrated that you can use informal assessment techniques such as observation and active listening to gain valuable information about Mary and her response to the environment. So those are just a few examples of ways we can demonstrate competency B, getting to know the person through assessment and discovery. We did this by evaluating the ways in which past and current events and environmental factors affect the way that Mary acts, reacts to others. We thought about things that we saw in the past, things we saw <clears throat> the day of the scenario, and then related that to how Mary was reacting. We recognized that Mary was communicating in a unique way. We didn't judge. We helped her to get her point across in a way that was better for all of us to understand. Using a holistic approach, participating in the Mary's life planning activities, and assisting in the implementation of those activities, we talked to members of Mary's circle of support to help find us 
different ways and unique ways to support Mary. Encouraging and supporting problem solving and coping skills. Number one, we talked to Mary. We made sure that she knew we were there as an ally to support her when she needs someone to help her through a challenging time. We gave her resources that she could use in the future when she isn't happy about the situation. Being informed about formal and informal assessments and conducting informal assessments in a variety of ways, in a variety of settings to gain information about Mary and her response to her environment. We used our observations and listening skills to guide us as we formulated a plan to support Mary. We also remembered that she has a behavioral support plan that should be followed consistently. When supporting a person with a disability, we should always be putting people first. We can do this by getting to know the person through assessment and discovery. When you know someone and know them well, you can be assured that you are well equipped to provide the highest qualities of support. Attached is an interactive activity um, that can be used in a variety of ways. Um, currently, it's introduced in <clears throat> the innovation training and it's used for supported employment. Um, we also use it here to help um, PSPs get to know the people that they're working with and themselves. Um, it can be filled out by the DSP and the individual that they're working with. And it kind of just focuses in on different things that are of interest, assets, things to worry about. Um, you've probably seen a variety of these, but it will be posted on the website. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on Competency B, Getting to Know the Person Through Assessment and Discovery. There are many more resources that can be found on the Regional Centers for Workforce Transformation website at www.workforcetransformation.org.